take a different turn. And, uh, so I'll play play it through kind of how I interpret it, and then you can to show a different interpretation, just so you can see how there's so there's a big range of how she can personalize the melody. I'll keep it down there. Um,
uh, a lot of time in the group, group there, so you can really see, you notice that change. Does anyone, so, so does anyone want to try this for just the lead sheet? So the exercise will be not necessarily just so you can read this, so that you can do something similar by just seeing the lead sheet. So that means that the shapes are in your ears and start to think about um, reading them. So I'll, I'll do a quick example. Um, so this is something to practice.
some of them move by fast, especially towards the end. Um, flat D, G7, C7. And it's one of those things where, you know, if you listen to like what us improvise, who, you know, we drill the shapes and we work on it, we don't necessarily outline every form as a passive, but we could. You know, it's one of those things where we practice so much that then you go above it and you can kind of uh, figure out other ways of harmonizing. But it's, it's definitely the, the starting point. In order to do it, not do it, you have to be able to do it. It's, when it's a funny thing. Um, does anyone want to try this one? I know it's early to use our brain this entire time. I'll try. Great. So a lot of these arpeggios 
or starting on the third and going up to that nine. So it's a really good arpeggio to start practicing. And then I start a couple of scales and a couple of uh, little extra bonus notes for you guys. Thank you. 
third, and you have that higher sense. I thought that was really good. I thought it was a good way to approach it because, you know, I, I, I feel like before, you know, before I was working on jazz, that I was practicing more kind of minor six arpeggios that I was practicing D minor seven flat five and D half diminished arpeggios. So I, it was kind of a way to kind of instantly uh, put it into that when I saw a D minor seven flat five. Does that make sense? So just like uh, like at the clinic the other day, we were talking about using the the diminished over G7 flat 9, and it's like, oh, I've been practicing all this diminished. Now I know that it works over over the chords. So that's a good realization, because that's a one of the stranger chords, you know? Some people are like, okay, I can grasp E flat major or C minor. That can be weird. All right, let's try this. So this is something that piano players do is that they'll revoice 
Just maybe if they hear you playing a certain kind of alteration. Um, and there's different kinds of ways of doing it, but again, it's all tension and bleeding. So sharp nine. Thank you. 
Okay. Diminished whole tone sometimes? Diminished whole tone Yeah. Mm -hmm. They will. Yeah. The first half of it.
couple chromatics, and you get this great uh, arpeggiated line that works awesome over F7. Um, and you're also building arpeggios off of the root, the third, and the fifth, and the seventh. Let's try it. So it's going to get pretty high for you to feel Maybe you can do it down on So.
Jason, on the two slides, were you basically alternating? You're, 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 He's standing around from, F. He's standing around F, and you're alternating between C minor and F7? Yeah, outlining. Outlining. Those are pigeons. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, like, inner, inner leading. <laughs> Detention. Uh, Detention. <laughs> Did you see the extra class? I'm already in the bucket. <laughs> All right. Just so we can cover everything. Um, this next exercise is a great way of uh, practicing your major seventh arpeggios. So you're kind of staggering off of each note in the arpeggio. Let's try it. Outlining 
preparing for the C minor, the G and C minor, it makes a lot more sense. I'll play it in a regular time for you.
So I, I will change it. I might do that.
physically, you want to make sure that you can, because if you're thrown into, like if you're on a jam, jam session, you never play cherry cherry fast, physically you don't know how you're still, you know, how your body can handle this. So that's another thing. So you don't want to over practice fast, but it doesn't hurt to it's, it's good to just know. But in general, if you're you know, 90% practice is, is slow and deliberate. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's uh, let's check out this next one. This is one of well, this first lick right here is wow, it's so classic. The over at the E flat major. Um, 
for me, I kind of accenting notes for phrasing. Phrasing within have a long, long bow. So I do a lot of like, two bows when I'm playing fast. Because I feel like I can get, still get phrasing.
and really to understand. So I might just prep. You know, if I could hire him for my three hour practice session, it'd be great. <laughs> but you know, you got this Abersol, or you can just do it yourself, you know. Find some voicings, put it into a fan, uh, garage band, loop it. Not that you want to get stuck, always do that kind of thing, but you want to know the motion. Yeah. 